Amen. Amen. Look at what he said in verse 11. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past. Now notice what he's saying here. He said ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hand. Now, what's he talking about? He said that if you are a born-again Christian, you used to be a Gentile or you used to be a Jew. Because he said right there, wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. In other words, in your flesh, before you got saved, you were a Gentile. If you're here this morning and you're not saved, you're a Gentile. You're not a member of the church of God because you hadn't been saved yet. Alright? Either that or you're a Jew. And so unless you have lineage that, that draws you back directly to Abraham, you're a Gentile. Okay? You may have some Jewish blood in you, but that don't make you a Jew. I have some Indian blood in me, but that don't make it Indian. A lot of people talk about, you know, they could have like, they could have like one thirty second of their blood is Indian. And they'll be talking to somebody, well, you know, I'm Indian. <laughs> yeah, you're Hodge 57. Yeah. <laughs> you got all kinds of stuff in you. There ain't very many people in this world pure blooded anymore. I want you to understand that. Well, I'm Indian. Yeah, like 15 generations ago, my grandpa had a dog that was Indian. <laughs> Makes me Indian, you know. We always talk about, I'm a Cherokee. Well, you're an American. Amen. Well, I'm this, I'm that. You're an American. If you was born in America, you was an American. Period. Simple and plain. Amen. That's why we salute our flag. Thank God for that flag. It represents who we are. You know? And, and look at what he says. He says this. He said, In time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made with hand. Meaning this, the Jews always called the Gentiles the uncircumcised. Because God gave the Jews the law that every male child was to be circumcised. And we all know what that means. But what happens is, the Gentiles didn't believe in that. They didn't practice it. So the Gentiles always called them the uncircumcised dogs. The uncircumcised swine. See, according to the Jews, Gentiles were called swine and dogs. That's what they were. And they were the uncircumcised. They were unclean. Because their law stated that to be clean as a Jew, you had to be circumcised. Or you were unclean. Look at verse 12. That at that time, ye were without Christ, being aliens, from the commonwealth of Israel. Now notice this. What happens in the Old Testament that God had chosen the Jewish people. He chose Israel out of all the world to be a chosen people that He was going to deal with that He gave His law to. Now God gave the Word of God and the law to the Jewish people, to Israel. Everybody else is considered a Gentile. You're either Jew or you're Gentile. So that's why I said, unless you have lineage that brings you directly back to Abraham, pure-blooded, you're not a Jew. You're a Gentile. Alright? So we've got two classifications of people here. Jew and Gentile. Now watch. He said that ye, as a Gentile, were without Christ. Why? Because the Bible says in John 1, He came unto His own. And who was His own? It was Israel. Jesus came to Israel. He didn't come to the Gentile world. He came to Israel. And Israel, the Bible said, He came into His own and His own received Him not. Israel rejected Christ several times, not just once. But because of their final rejection, He said, I'm going to come to the other world. I'm going to go tell people which are in my people and they will call me their God because they're going to be my people. That's the Jewish people or the Gentile people that he would, uh, would, would save. He said there were aliens. We were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. In other words, we didn't have the laws. We didn't have the standards. We didn't have the rules. We didn't have anything that they had completely set apart. Alienated. Not just separated, but totally, absolutely nothing to do with it. 
And he said, and strangers from the covenants of promise. In other words, all the promises that God gave to Abraham, God did not give to the rest of the world. Remember this, God told Abraham, He said, I've got a land, and it's called Canaan land, and He said, that's going to be your land. I want you to understand this. This world is reserved for a people. One of these days, after Jesus comes and redoes all this stuff, this world will be inhabited by Israel. They have a place. They have a purpose. And what's going to happen is they're going to inherit this earth. It's not going to be Jehovah's Witnesses. It's not going to be Baptists. It's not going to be Catholics. It's not going to be Pentecostals. Now I'm going to prove to you in just a second that when you get saved, you do not become a spiritual Jew. You've heard me say that before. I'm going to prove it to you in these, in these Scriptures. Now what happens is the Gentiles were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. Had nothing to do with them. But when Israel rejected Christ, Christ turned to the rest of the world to build Him a church. Now God didn't take the Jew and cast them away. The Bible said, did God cast away Israel forever? He said, God forbid. God didn't do that. But God took Israel and set them aside. You know how it is, ladies, when you do stuff. My wife makes one of the absolute best red velvet cakes in the world. She makes it all by scratch. She don't go buy these in the box things already, just mix it up and do it. My wife makes it by scratch. She makes this pudding. There's a, a, a little pudding. I don't know how she makes it, but I, I know, she, you know she puts certain things and she'll cook it on the stove. And she, you can't leave it alone. You got to start to play with it. Red velvet cake is complicated. He said, well, it ain't too much work. You no, know, but they're good. I'm telling you, it's worth my life doing it. She'll mix that stuff up and when that pudding is finished, you know what she does with it? She takes it, she puts it in the refrigerator. Because that has to come into the cake at a certain time and be mixed in the cake, and that's what makes it a red velvet cake. That's what makes it the cake. The what? That's the frosting. The frosting. Well, that, that's what makes it the cake. Okay? So what happens is, just like that pudding, all right, just like the frosting, it's, it's all part of the frosting. What happens is, is God took Israel and worked Israel and worked with them until Jesus came there rejecting him and God took them and in a sense put them in the refrigerator. God didn't throw them away. God preserved them. God said, I'm going to set you aside because i got something else I need for you. Watch this in the end of this. She takes all the rest of that stuff. She mixes it together and she puts it in the oven. And for Christmas, she always makes a red one and a green one because that's the Christmas color. But when all that cake is cooled off and stuff, and she gets that thing and put it on the plate, she takes that stuff and makes that frosting. She puts it and covers it up. It makes the cake. Now, the cake is good by itself, but it ain't near as good without that frosting. But when you bite into it, you know, you say, man, this is the best cake in the world. Now, normally when I say that, she usually messes one up. <laughs> That's why she makes several of them during the Christmas and Thanksgiving season. Because I'll guarantee you one thing. She might make four or five of them, but I'll guarantee you one of them is going to come out awesome. And that's the one we keep in the house. <laughs> well, what happens is it's all made for the final presentation of the cake. And God has Israel set aside right now because He's building the church. Now, Israel has not been cast off. When I got saved, I didn't become a spiritual Jew, and you didn't me. Now all these other people believe they're taking the place of the Jew because the Jews hated God and God threw them away and got rid of them. If that's the case, why do still got Jews in the world? Why is Israel still a country? And that's why everybody hates it. You know, they always did. They're going to do that. Watch what happens. He said this. He said, We were strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, Ye who sometimes, notice the word, were afar off. Meaning I'm not afar off anymore. May, or made nigh by what? By my works. By getting saved. By, by, by joining the church. By getting baptized. That's what it says? That ain't what it says. 
It said that we're made not by the blood of Christ. It didn't say that we're made not by the grace of God. It said we're made not by the blood of Christ. He had to die. Why did He have to die? Because grace alone could not save you. Grace will bring you to God. It will show you salvation. Salvation comes through repentance. The problem is, is a lot of preachers are not preaching about repentance. Oh, you're, you're good. You're, you're okay. And God loves you. You need to repent. Jesus said repent or perish. You repent or you spend eternity in the lake of fire. You never get saved unless you repent. Repent means to turn away from, but to turn unto something else. In other words, when you repent of your sinful condition, you, re you, re you repent, you turn away from who you are, and you turn to God for who He is. And God changes you. Now watch this.